Hello everybody. College football previews continue for 2017 and as you can obviously see I am not in my normal confines of Norman, Oklahoma. No sir, no ma'am. For this show we are on location in Galveston, Texas. That's right. Definitely soaking in the sun and having a terrific time. Me and my family uh, have enjoyed our time in extreme south Texas. Now a team that's only a couple of hours from Galveston, if you go uh, northwest of Houston, is College Station, home of the Texas A&M Aggies, and that will be my preview for this particular show. Texas A&M, my remember, made a huge splash in the SEC just five years ago. That's right, their debut year of 2012, 11 wins, including that year beating Alabama. But since then, A&M has not played even close to that same caliber, although they've gotten off to good starts since 2012. They've thrown in some 8-5 and five seasons, one 9-4 and four year in that campaign. And, of course, old news in College Station, Kevin Sumlin, the head coach, is on the hot seat. Even he admits that, but he's looking forward to the 2017 campaign. Let's take a look at the Texas A&M Aggies for 2017 in terms of the offense. And... First name that might pop up to mind when you're thinking about A&M offense, the ever-dangerous Christian Kirk. Defenses have to worry about him because of his receiving skills and the fact that he can get open. Last year, Kirk had about 1,000 yards receiving and had his fair share of touchdowns. But his biggest impact could be at special teams. Nobody in the country last year was better at punt returning than Kirk. Yeah, he's going to have another big year, especially if the other group of receivers can step up. And this is a big question mark because they lost some good ones in the form of Josh Reynolds as well as Ricky Seals-Jones and Speedy Noyle. New crop of A&M receivers, don't be surprised if true freshman Jamon Osborne figures into the rotation. At 6'2", 220 pounds, he was an early enrollee this past spring, and yeah, he did play in a spring game and made an impact. Redshirt freshman Courtney Davis also figures to be in the mix, as well as a senior in Damian Ratley. Now, speaking of seniors, you have Calvin Klein. No, not the underwear maker, but he figures to be the starter at tight end. And the offensive interior, well, they're back with Colton Prater at center, as well as the guards, Eric McCoy on the left and Connor Lamphere on the right. But the offensive tackles have to be replaced, so naturally it's a cause for concern. Coda Martin looks like will occupy the left tackle, and on the opposite side, Keaton Sutherland. A&M last year, well, they were good offensively. And overall, I mean, the rush offense averaged over 200 yards per game, number six in the SEC. And Travion Williams and Keith Ford are back. Now, Travion, as a true freshman, he impressed over 1,000 yards in rushing. And Keith Ford, who started his career with my Sooners, and, of course, has blended in quite well with A&M. Ford now enters his final year. But how will the passing offense do? Last year under Trevor Knight, for the most part, they actually did decent. In fact, 255 yards through the air per game. And remember, AM averaged 35 points per game, which was third best in the SEC. And the passing offense was fourth best in the SEC as well. Last year's number two offense in the conference will have a new guy at quarterback, though. Will it be last year's backup, the senior in Jake Hubinek? Who knows? But a couple of freshmen figured to be in the mix for that single-collar job as well. Nick Starkle, a redshirt freshman, or it could go to Kellen Bond, a true freshman. Now talking about the A&M defense, you might remember um, Miles Garrett. Yeah, um, all he did was become an All-American at defensive end and he was the number one overall in this past season's NFL draft. Not bad at all. Uh, so, needless to say, A&M is going to miss his presence. Let's talk a little bit more about the Texas A&M defense. And it's not just the fact that you lose an all-caliber player like Miles Garrett. You're going to miss Deshaun Hall as well, the other defensive end, who was a third-round NFL draft pick. So, you've got two defensive ends that just haven't been there as much. That's Jared Johnson, who did, however, um, have his moments four and a half sacks a year ago, the senior Jared Johnson. And on the other side, you have Michael Clements. Now, the defensive tackles, plenty of experience in this department. Zay Coven Henderson, he is a senior. And the other guy, Kingsley Kiki, a junior. Last year, A&M was a little bit better as far as rush defense, but not enough to make you flip cartwheels. They still gave up a lot per game. That's 190 yards on the ground per contest. But remember, the year before, they gave up over 210 yards on the ground per game. At linebackers, the only guy with real experience back is 
Otaro Alaka, the leading returning tackler for the Wrecking Crew. 74 tackles a year ago for Alaka. And then we'll play a 4-3 alignment. And now looking at the secondary, which definitely took a step back in 2016. Remember, in 2015, it was a veteran group, but they had a lot of bodies to replace, and it showed because they gave up a whopping 250 yards of pass deep per game that was second worst in the SEC. So you got three of the four back, and we'll see if they can have a better go around of it this time. We'll start with the corners, both back in Nick Harvey as well as Priest Willis, and they're both seniors. And you have a returning starter at free safety. That's Armani Watts, a junior. And Donovan Wilson figures to be the strong safety. He's a senior. As far as the special teams goes, we already talked about it earlier how big of an impact Christian Kirk has as far as returning. He's very dangerous. As far as the punting, well, he's a good one. And Shane Trapuca had 43 yards per boot, but... The place kicker, boy, a little bit shaky in 2016. Now, he made the majority of his kicks, but he missed several fewer than 40 yards away. So that's got to be corrected. Now, let's go ahead and highlight the schedule for Texas A&M, beginning with that opener, which is the same as last year's opener. It's against UCLA, but this time you got to play them at the Rose Bowl. Last year's game at College Station was won by the Aggies in overtime. And just like someone, Jim Moore at UCLA is on the hot seat. So you have a feeling the loser of this game is already going to be 0-2 in the strike count with still a lot of season to go. The rest of A&M's non-conference games appear to be a piece of cake. Nickel State and Louisiana, both in the month of September and near the end of the season, you'll play New Mexico, all those games at home. Conference opener, as usual, is against Arkansas, which is typically been regarded by Vegas as a near coin flip game, although A&M has had the better end of it the past few seasons. Of course, they always play at Jerry's World in Arlington. South Carolina, who should be a little bit better this season, has to come to College Station. And then October looks rough for the Wrecking Crew. Early October, you get Alabama, the three-time defending SEC champions. The next week, you got to play at the Swamp against Florida. That looks like a handful and you get a bye week, Mississippi State will be better, but at least you get them at home, as you will Auburn. And the last two games, both away from College Station at Ole Miss in mid-November, and LSU, which has given A&M fits. A&M has not beaten LSU since the Aggies joined the SEC back in 2012. Vegas says that A&M's win total, 7.5. I'm going to go slightly under. Look. I like Christian Kirk as a receiver, and it's a good ground attack, and the secondary should be a little bit better, but there's no question that there are quite a few missing pieces on this team from last year. Of course, I think the biggest is going to be Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall, those defensive ends, and then will drop as far as pass pressure, in my opinion, and plus the schedule makes it, for me, very difficult to think that A&M is going to surpass 7.5 wins. Look, in my opinion, I think if Kevin Sumlin's Aggies win at least eight regular season games this season, that he should not be fired. In fact, he should be praised. You have to remember the talent that they lost this past season, especially Miles Garrett and starting with a new quarterback. And that schedule, too, I'm telling you what, you can win at least eight regular season games with the schedule and with the circumstances that A&M faces this season. I think for Sumlin, he should not be fired. But then again, I'm not the athletic director at A&M. That's my look at Texas A&M as we get ready to wrap up from Galveston, Texas, just two hours from College Station. Sports Avant TV, thanks for watching.